So I want to talk about truth and honesty in pictures. And uh, I'm using these two images to discuss what's going on in each one uh, as an example of that. In this picture, we were staying in a hotel in, in Portugal, in Lisbon. And we had seen in the dining room that everything had been left from the night before. So we, uh, Jean said, hey, I have, a, I have an idea. I'm gonna go up to the room and put this shirt and tie on. And then we'll come down and make some pictures here. And uh, he pretended he was eating. He pretended he was talking to people. And then I caught this moment. It's, it's completely contrived. It, it's, there's nothing about it that's like a caught moment of, of, of truth and honesty in any way. In this picture, uh, we were in Florence and we went out in the back yard, which had this beautiful olive tree orchard in the background. And um, in the moment, I just looked at him and picked up the camera and, and made the picture and nothing changed. It was just powerful in the way that it moved me to do that. And yet, you know, they're both strong pictures of Jean-Michel because of who he is and who he's become. But this definitely stands out more to me. And, and there's a big difference between the, the contrived picture of Jean at that dinner table uh, in Portugal, in Lisbon, and Jean-Michel in Florence. It, it's, it's definitely, you know, uh, palpable or tangible in that way. Um, whereas I think the one at the dining, the, in the dinner table uh, or the dining room in the hotel, it's, you're looking at Jean-Michel and he is, you know, so famous now, you know, uh, that when you look at it, you think, wow, this is, this is a cool picture of him. But if you look a little longer at the two of them, I think there's far more dimensionality in the uh, in the, the portrait of him in, in Florence. And what do you think about this? Um, how do you feel about it? I think it's a nice interpretation of how you created him just like a regular person, just like us. Mm. And also just like his body language, just like so comfortable. Yeah, accessible. <clears throat> yeah, it's interesting. I like that. I like I mean, I, one obvious one is sort of like eye contact. I think sort of the one on the right, there's so much that eye contact says in a photo, even if like, whether it's like, you know, you can tell sort of how someone wants to be perceived or looked at even just with eye contact. But I don't know, the one on the left is just so like, it's almost too perfect, if that makes sense. Like it's very like, he, it literally just looks like a glimpse in a scene that you make up and that making up is all in, the viewer's head, but the one on the right, there's just like a really deep sense of like, sort of like almost like not having a shield up and sort of like, just like I'm giving you what I am right here. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, I think it's interesting going off what Andrew said, um, talking about the body language and how in the photo on the right, he's looking directly into the lens and it's so much more arresting when you have that eye contact with him. You're really fixated on him. You know, the picture to the right, you know, you really can tell that he's comfortable with you. I think he was confiding in you, even without speaking. So it's a beautiful, beautiful photo. It's also kind of cool that he thought of that as like an idea. So it's like, let's sit at this dirty table and just like take a photo. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's the beauty photo has. Yeah. But I do like that you bring up the, um, the kind of naturalness of it all. Like that is definitely what I'm trying to do is in some way relate to who I'm photographing with. Uh, I think that it's a challenge because I think people are, are expecting something more from pictures in terms of entertainment and uh, and so I think that I'm trying hard to to sort of 
go against the, the tide um, to see what's back behind it all. I know some people have said, good luck with that, but I, I feel like I've chipped away uh, and it's had a big effect on my sort of own outlook. At this point, I've learned that it's, it is all about truth for me. Um, I just thought if I can remove the performance from the, or the, the, the impulse to perform, if I can in some way just kind of quiet everything down and just get it to a, a sort of neutral place, and where would that place be? What would that be? And I thought a lot about the mechanics of photographing, the interaction, what happens during the interaction. And um, I realized the worst thing you can say is just act natural or don't, don't worry about the camera. Like none of these are good things to say. So what do I do? I have to sort of create another place for the person to sort of focus on. And it has, it can't be about them focusing inwardly. Like you can't tell somebody to do that. You have to figure out a physical, I had to figure out a physical way to, to get people to do that. So right away I'm thinking about removing performance. And then, well, where are they going? So, I just think about what is the simplest, what's the simplest thing for a person to do? Just look in the camera, just look in the lens. And just keep breathing. Just concentrate on breathing. Just sort of pay attention and keep breathing. And it, yeah, there's probably a bit of patience involved in, in, in ourself, having patience with ourselves in order to have patience with others, to have empathy, to sort of realize like what it's like to sit in front of a camera and, you know, try to um, to be vulnerable, not to try to be vulnerable, but to be vulnerable. In the end, I took that with me and thought a lot about that in terms of where I'm vulnerable and how to sort of make the person in front of the camera or sitting in front of the lens um, feel okay with their vulnerability too. Because if I'm okay with it, then maybe that'll help them feel okay with it as well. It's kind of crazy that I set out to photograph performers and that I would arrive at this place where I wanted to eliminate performance from the pictures of performers. If I sort of started out thinking that way, I don't know if I would have ever said, the thing to do with performers is to remove performance. Am I performing now? Probably. <laughs>